Don't come with this nonsense. Because it is not only pathetic nonsense, it is absolutely sinful to say that Allah, when na'uzu billah min hadha, Allah calls someone else to take the appearance of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And that innocent man, innocent because he never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. When a Muslim scholar is forced to admit that Jesus died by crucifixion, you should listen. For nearly 14 centuries, the vast majority of Muslims have denied Jesus' death on the cross. The most popular view has always been some version of substitution theory, the claim that Allah miraculously disguised someone else to make him look like Jesus, and that this other person was crucified in Jesus' place. There are three main problems with the standard Islamic narrative. One, scholars, actual historians, regard Jesus' death by crucifixion as an indisputable fact of history. Two, the Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Christian scriptures, and the Christian scriptures are quite clear that Jesus died by crucifixion. Three, the Islamic view portrays Allah as a cosmic trickster who deceives people about his prophets. Allah tricked people into believing that Jesus died. Fortunately, there have always been a minority of Muslims who aren't scared to point out the holes in the standard Islamic narrative. Take Sheikh Imran Hussein. In a lecture about the Quran and the Messiah, Sheikh Imran eventually discusses the crucifixion of Jesus. He begins by saying that Jesus only appeared to die, which sounds like the standard Islamic narrative. When they saw him die on the cross, they were convinced he could not have been the Messiah. What they did not know was that Allah made it appear to them that he was crucified. But then he clarifies what it really means to be crucified and what it really means to die. First, crucifixion. What's the definition of crucifixion? It is that you should die by hanging on the cross. So crucifixion isn't simply nailing someone to a cross, it's the person dying by nailing him to a cross. But what does it mean to die? What is the definition of death? The definition of death is that Allah should send the angel to take the soul and not return it. Is there anyone who differs with me? To die, to really die, is to have your soul taken away and not returned. This is important for what he's about to say, so he repeats it. The definition of death is that Allah should take the soul and not return it. Can Allah take the soul and return it? Tell the schoolboy, go back and study the Quran. So, what does the Quran mean in Surah 4, verse 157, when it says that Allah made it appear as if Jesus died? Get ready for an epic rant. So then what did Allah do to make it appear that he died? Let me warn you. And my language is sometimes very harsh, because that's the only language some people can understand. Some people can only understand harsh language. Got it, Sheikh. Thanks for the cosign on the unstoppable fire hose of sarcasm and mockery that is D. Wood. Don't come with this nonsense. Because it is not only pathetic nonsense, it is absolutely sinful to say that Allah, when na'uzu billah min hadha, Allah calls someone else to take the appearance of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And that innocent man, innocent because he never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. So, the standard Islamic narrative. Wait for judgment day with that nonsense. Pathetic nonsense. It's not there in the Quran. It's in your imagination. That's what it is. And yet it took the world of Islam by storm. What a brainwash Ummah we are today. He ain't lying. Well, then what happened? Well, then why don't you go to the Quran? Let the Quran explain rather than go on fancy flights of imagination. You're going to tell Allah on Judgment Day you caused that man to assume the appearance of someone? 
And he who never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. That is an act of injustice. You attribute an injustice to Allah. What foolishness. He's right. Absolute foolishness. But it's what Muslims tell me every single day. Allah took his soul. They thought he was dead. They took down the body. They put the body in the cave. They sealed the cave. Allah returned the soul. As simple as that. Nobody knew that the body, that the soul was returned. And Allah raised him. So, while Jesus was on the cross, Allah took his soul, meaning that he was dead in the biological sense. His body was taken down from the cross and put in the tomb. But then Allah returned Jesus' soul to his body, meaning he didn't die in the stricter sense the Sheikh is talking about. He wasn't dead in the sense of Allah taking away the soul and not returning it. Allah did return his soul, so Jesus rose from biological death. But since so many Muslims have been indoctrinated with substitution theory, how about another warning, Sheikh? But let me warn you one more time. If you stick with this theory of substitution, you are going to be in a pathetic state on Judgment Day. Let me warn you one more time. This is a simple explanation from the Quran. And so, he did not die. Jesus didn't die in the sense that Sheikh Imran is talking about. He died in the normal sense of the word died. He was crucified in the normal sense of the word crucified. But given more specific meanings of these terms, Jesus wasn't killed and wasn't crucified. Now, it may sound as if Sheikh Imran is just playing word games here, but think about the point he's making, because he may be right about what the Quran is claiming. The Quran says nothing about Allah disguising someone else and making him look like Jesus. The Quran simply says they didn't kill him and didn't crucify him. In context, people are bragging, we killed the Messiah, we crucified the Messiah, we got him, he's finished. And Allah's response is, no you didn't, and no he isn't. Could Allah just be saying, look, you think that by beating Jesus and crucifying him and stabbing him through the heart with a spear and burying him, that you've killed him, but you're wrong, because I can just raise him from the dead. Couldn't Allah simply be telling people that the enemies of Jesus didn't accomplish what they were trying to accomplish? I think this view, Sheikh Imran's view, is massively superior to the standard Islamic narrative, which rejects all of history, rejects multiple sources that Muhammad and Allah confirmed, and portrays Allah as a cosmic trickster who deceives people for no reason. But this leads to an important question, a question for Muslims. My Muslim friends, if you've been wrong about Jesus' death and resurrection for nearly 14 centuries, what else are you wrong about?